If you look back in last week's lesson, the lesson last week said that the error from Job's friends was their alleging that he was being punished by God when the truth was that, that he was not being punished by God. So that was the error, alleging that God was punishing Job. But the truth, according to the lesson, was that God actually does punish. He just wasn't punishing Job. Is this really true? Is there alleged truth that God does punish and must punish and is required to punish a truth? Or are they caught up in a, in a cosmic a lie that goes all the way back to the inception of sin in heaven? Well, Desire of Ages 761, you know this quote. I love this quote. About the opening of the great controversy, Satan declared the law of God cannot be obeyed and justice was inconsistent with mercy. That every sin must meet its punishment, urged Satan. Desire of Ages 761. This has been Satan's allegation all along, that if you break God's rule, God's law, and Satan's version of how reality works, God's law is nothing but a system of rules with no inherent consequence, and therefore God is the source of inflicted punishment. He's required to do so. That's Satan's version all along. So the underlying argument for God as, as required to punish sin is an attack against God's law, that God's law functions no different than the types of laws sinful beings make rules without inherent consequence, rather than seeing God as creator. And you know, one of the core messages of the Adventist church was that we were to call people back to worship, creator worship, worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea. And part of creator worship is recognizing his laws are the laws upon which reality are built. And deviations from those are inherently destructive. You can't live outside of harmony with how God constructed reality to work. But if you go the other direction and you buy into this idea that God must punish sin, then this leads people to shift their fear of sin, which is deviation from the design. So you should be afraid to jump off the Empire State Building. You should be afraid to tie a plastic bag over your head. You should be afraid to eat cyanide. You should be afraid to jab a pencil in your eye. You should, I mean, there's lots of things you should fear. And every one of those are deviations from the design because it's destructive. You should be, you should be afraid to cheat on your spouse. Not because your spouse will catch you, no. But because what it does to you, it corrupts you, it hardens you, it warps you. It's destructive. You should be afraid to smoke cigarettes. But instead, Satan has got this idea in Christian thought, in, in world thought, really, that the problem is breaking a rule, and the rule giver then must inflict proper punishments. Thus, we shift our fear from the, from the consequence of deviating from God's design, what the destructiveness it brings to us and the people we love. Instead, we become afraid of the, of the lawgiver, the one who's created reality. We're afraid of him instead. And thus, it undermines our ability to trust him. This is the big shift when you, when you don't understand the law correctly.